Hi, uh, I am doing a second video as I work through this um, Harry Potter quilt because now that I am done with the top and I pieced the back, I love this back because it's a nice flannel, nice for snuggling, I um, am going to use the fusible batting and so I thought I'd give you a peek on what that looks like. Now the piece I have, here it is right here, is heirloom fusible batting. And this one I found in my stash was queen size. And uh, so I'm going to have to cut it down because this is a throw quilt. But then I saved the remainder for another quilt. You know, baby quilt, throw quilt. There's probably enough. Oh, and I always make my binding ahead of time before I've even quilted so that it's all ready to go. There's something about that. If I quilt a quilt and I don't have the binding made, sometimes it sits around here for a long time begging for binding. But if I am efficient enough to make my binding before I've started quilting, there's something smug that comes over me and I'm like, oh, I have the binding made and I'll get it done. So that's why I did this, because this quilt needs to get done. If you hear any hammering or banging, those poor painters are still trying to paint my house in between our weather. <laughs> it has been some kind of spring, let me tell you. But, um, <laughs> This may be the longest painting job they have had. So let's get started. So let's see here. I'm going to open this up. I might want to open a window and get a little fresh air in here. Just because I've had the iron going this afternoon. Getting that last of that. Um, yeah, just a little bit of air. So the way this fusible batting comes, and I like this heirloom fusible because it's fusible on both sides. There are some fusible battings that are just fusible on one side, but I'm not too keen on that. I want it fused on both sides. And some machine must have just wrapped this in. Oh my gosh. Yeah. like birth of a baby. <laughs> okay. I don't know nothing about birthing no batting. Oh, here it comes. Yahoo! <sighs> okay. So, let's see. See, it's kind of like a, has a, a not a real sticky, like sticky that sticks to your hands, but it definitely, as you can tell, is sticky. So I'm going to take the top off. And I've got my backing laying on my ironing board. And I'm going to do this. Let's see. How am I going to do this? Hmm. Yeah. Let's see what the... This says it's... Ooh, that's a nice breeze. 90 by 108. So I know my quilt is like barely 60 by 70 something. So even if I cut it this way, I know I'm going to have enough. So I'm going to do a shortcut. And what I'm going to do is I know that my top oh shoot blew off something yeah so my top I'm just gonna cut that batting right across there in the way I'm gonna do this I'm bringing it over to my cutting table Just make a little cut there. See, I made a little cut there. And 
then I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and my ruler. Okay. Oh my gosh. I know you couldn't see that, but it cut just perfect. So I know that I have that perfectly. Okay, here I'm twirling around. Okay, so now I have to peel apart this batting. So I'm going to find, and I'm just going to be peeling it like that. Get it all off there. And it's got some wrinkles in it, but that will all iron out. And I love this because I cannot, I'm no longer able to get down on my hands and knees, nor do I want to do bull clamps on a table and pin an entire quilt top. And then while I'm quilting, I have to remove the pins. I am always under somewhat of a time crunch, and so I want something that is efficient and easy. So my batting just fits perfectly on that back. Okay, now I'm going to keep peeling this apart. This may be the most boring video or tip you'll have ever seen. Just getting a fusible batting set for quilting. But I know I've been asked by some people about the fusible batting that I use, so. Okay. So I have it all unrolled. And the piece I have left, uh, as I said, I would save for another, another quilt. And I'll just stick it back in the bag. So there we go, all the batting's ready, and I've kind of somewhat smoothed it out. Got, got some of the wrinkles out. And look at how much batting uh, uh, roll I still have. So that's a whole nother quilt. And I'm going to save that for a whole nother quilt. I just have to remember that there's no longer a crane size batting. Okay, so now get my iron hot. Okay, hold on one second. I'm stepping on the, the batting and the backing down here on the floor, but that's okay. Now I'm going to line up my quilt top. just kind of smooth it out. I know that the backing is all smoothed out, but I kind of get as much of the smoothing out as I can. Okay. The great thing about this fusible batting is that uh, you can lift up, if you feel a big bump, you can lift up your top or your back. So now I'm just going to start Fusing, and I try to not go over the edge onto the actual batting, but I'm just going to keep ironing this. And I, I tend to do one whole side, the front first, 
and then I'll flip it over and do the back. And the great thing about this is um, because I'm quilting this myself, I don't have to have that three inches all the way around that the long arm quilters like to have. And as I run my hand over, I can feel if there's any bumps. And if there's like a bump where the batting got folded over, I can lift this up and take a look at what's going on. So here I feel some bumping there, so I pull that out. And then I bring that down again. It's easy peasy. And I can conceivably here in half an hour have a quilt all ready to start quilting it. Whereas if I was pinning, that would take me a while. So next, I'm going to move it up. So all I'm going to do is fold it here. <laughs> and then I'm going to have to not be stepping on it, Anna. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to smooth that out again. Looks like I have to get a little bit more stuck there, but that's okay, I can do that. Move my my iron over so I can work here. Straighten this all out. As you can see, it's a pretty self-explanatory, easy system to do this. I just kind of smooth, as I'm smoothing it out, I'm feeling for any big wrinkles in the batting. Each time I move up, I look under and I take out any tuck in the batting or the backing, kind of get it somewhat smoothed out. And then I bring that over and then I feel again because my hands will tell me if there's a big wrinkle somewhere. I got my cordless iron dock just outside of camera range, but 
I love that cordless iron, but you do have to put it back on the dock. Okay, now I'm at the end. Oh, and look at I have enough batting here for a table runner. I love that. So I'm going to cut that off. can save it for another project. I like to save all the little things I can because our quilting supplies can add up. Okay, so see there's a whole table runner worth of fusible batting. Straighten this out. Iron the last bit of the front. Okay. Now for the back. So all I'm going to do for the back is just flip it over, drop it on the floor, and start rolling it out. And the back would have stuck a little bit because of the, um, the steam kind of going through from the front. But I still need to fuse it to the backing too. So I'm going over the back, and there shouldn't be too many bumps from the batting because I would have pulled them out when I was doing the front. I just love this fabric. This is a Valerie Wells uh, fabric, Ashton Road. Gosh, this is great fabric. It's a flannel. <laughs> it's going to be cozy. I'm just going to roll it like I did the front, but do it backwards. Now, I find that if there's, if there's a little bit of a wrinkle that got into the back while I was doing the front, I just smooth that out or I can peel this up and lay it back down but mostly it's it's so minute that I can just use my fingers and then iron it Generally what I do then is I, um, when I first go to quilt this, I will kind of grid quilt it, which means that I'll um, go around the inside of the border, um, that kind of thing, just to kind of anchor it all down. So when I'm futzing around with it, it doesn't um, come apart, although I've not had that problem, but better safe than sorry. This is such a cute quilt. Now you see how I'm getting a little bit of a, you can't really see, a little bit of a wrinkle. So all I'm going to do is peel this up.
steam in there. Felt a little wrinkle there, so I lifted it up to make sure I get it out. So even though G would have edited this video so you didn't have to watch me iron the entire time, um, it really only took me a, uh, about 20 minutes, maybe less than 20 minutes, to layer this quilt with the fusible batting and it is now all ready for quilting which is really awesome and I always go back over the borders because I hesitate to go too much over the edge, so sometimes the borders are a little bit, um, I didn't steam them enough. And like I said, I will first quilt in the ditch around the edge just to kind of, I always play a little bit on the safe side. But yeah, we're ready to quilt this baby. I know there's going to be one happy boy. I don't know, with all these little spiders on here, his mother might not be too happy, but... Yeah. So that's fusible batting. I'm, I'm a believer. Well, actually, if I'm quilting it myself, I'm a believer in fusible batting. <laughs> For the long arm quilter, no. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed that tip, <laughs> that shortcut tip from the, the beehive. Yeah, I think I might get this done in time. Thanks you guys for hanging out and I hope your weather <laughs> is better than our weather. Yeah. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies. <laughs> <laughs>